Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this evening's screening, the world premiere of Laura Lucchetti's Fiore Gemello, Twin Flower. My name is Pierce Handling, Director and CEO of TIFF. It's wonderful to see you all here. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'd like to start out with acknowledging the afternoon's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. And we are very grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community. I'd like to um, mention that this film is eligible for the Grolsch People's Choice Award. Please vote, uh, tiff.net slash uh, vote. And of course, you know how important that award is, so please do vote. I'd like to thank the people that brought us to uh, this afternoon's film, Fandango and Film Italia, who host me when I go to Rome for my screenings. And you can imagine how difficult that is. This is uh, Laura's second feature film. Um, her first feature was done eight years ago, a film called Hay Fever. And this film is an extremely winning and compelling film about a young couple who meet up on the road as they are both running away from something. It captures a moment, I think, that is right now happening all over Europe, as you will see, as uh, Europe obviously grapples with the influx of foreigners. But Twin Flower handles this idea in a very fresh and different kind of way. What I loved about the film was its visual sensibility, uh, has a really, really light touch, and I think Laura has done a fantastic job in terms of bringing this young couple together and showing their life um, on the road as they try to basically try to survive. So we're absolutely delighted to have her here today. Please join me in welcoming Laura Lucchetti. Hi, Welcome, Piers. Laura. Thank you. Um, happy and thrilled and terrified <laughs> because of, you are the very, very first people who are going to, you know, watch this movie before anybody else. So, you know, I rely on you. <laughs> you know, I need to leave the theater alive. <laughs> and no, I'm, I'm really, really happy. Thank you, Piers, for having us on the Toronto International Film Festival. Um, I mean, it's a christening for me. I, I couldn't wish for anything better than this. So uh, we put a lot of love making this film. I hope you'll enjoy it. And, you know, uh, we can, if you have questions, uh, we'll meet. We'll definitely do a Q&A afterwards. afterwards. Yeah, perfect. But thank you for, for this christening you're giving me. And enjoy the film. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Thank you for staying for the Q&A. My name is Adam Cook. I'm Programming Associate for Peers Handling. Just a reminder before we begin, if you have a question, please raise your hand. Speak as loudly and clearly as you can. I'll repeat it so that everyone in the cinema can hear. Please welcome back to the stage, Laura Lucchetti. Hi. Hi. So before we go to the audience, perhaps let's start from the beginning and you could talk about the origin of the project and what inspired this story and these characters. Uh, I wanted to tell a story of the, an encounter of two people who come from different worlds. So, you know, he, Khalil, the guy who, who, who plays Basim, actually arrived on one of these boats that you see on the news a couple of months before we started shooting. So the film then developed, you know, uh, around him. And um, Anastasia, who's the girl who plays Anna, comes from a, a family with, um, you know, from Ukraine. So she's totally Italian now. She's like, mm, she, she, she feels Italian, but, you know, she's again um, an immigrant, you know. So they have something in common, the two characters. But the story that I wanted to tell is about a guy who arrives in Italy, and, you know, and he's escaping from his past and he's looking mm, forwards and towards his future. And he's, you know, he's, he's looking for the rights that all the kids his age have. But at the same time, there are families who deal with the you know, trafficking of um, immigrants. So what happens if a girl who doesn't want to belong in the place where she belongs and has a father that does what he does, meets somebody like him? So they come from different worlds. They, come, they don't speak the same language. They don't know 
they don't know anything about each other, but there's something that happens that goes beyond, you know, culture, uh, you know, nationality, language, and it happens, you know, in in this case, it happens, you know, like that. They cannot do without each other anymore. So, you know, there it's a relationship between two desperate people who are both running from their past, trying to regain the innocence that has been stolen from them and they meet and they you know they go on a journey uh in this sort of magical place which is sardinia and they become one thing so going off of that could you talk about how you first encountered khalil then in casting them both yeah casting was well, you know, street casting so i met um hundreds of these kids hundreds 11 12 and the stories were like i he walked from the ivory coast to libya and then he got, uh, and then he, you know, he, he got put in jail, and it happens to all of them. And then he got on a boat, and then he arrived on this boat to Sardinia. And Sardinia is one of the best places, um, you know. They, they 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 give the best welcome ever, you know. You know, we have lots of people coming to Lampedusa, but Sardinia is amazing. So his journey was really long and really difficult. But I met at least 100, 130 kids like him. Some of them were 11 or 12. They walked from Mali, from Senegal, they walk. And if it's a family of 10 people, they go like, the parents say, okay, we have like $1,000. You are like the strongest, off you go, you know? And, and these kids go, you know, it's like asking one of your children to go from Toronto to New York walking. You know, and so I met many of them, and the story started developing around them. And then when I met Khalil, Khalil, Khalil had it, you know. And also, he wanted to be an actor, and I'm sure he, he will be. But before this, he hasn't he hadn't done anything. So, um, as an amazing soul as is Anastasia, they wild. You know, they're not the regular kids that go to a mall on a Saturday afternoon and then they go to a multiplex. No, they do different things, and I, you know, and I, they're very talented and their heart is really big. So, yeah, and it was it was beautiful to work with them. I learned a lot. So then, the process of developing the characters was quite flexible in terms of from the script to what's on the screen, it was influenced by? It was influenced by their stories, it was influenced by them. They're not actors that you can tell them to say lines, you know, also they don't have many lines. And uh, <laughs> so it's like, you know, you know, when we did subtitles, we realized we have 11 minutes dialogues in, an <laughs> in a 90 minute film, so we saved on the subtitles. <laughs> Well, okay. But you know, that was the reality. You know, she's shocked she doesn't speak, okay? But when I when I was talking to Khalil in order to get him, you know, through the emotions, I had 12, less, 12 French lessons. Uh, I'll tell you, they were nothing. So it was like signs, you know, drawings, but we understood each other, you know? And he's exactly what he is. He speaks a bit of Italian, a bit of French, a bit of um, uh, Bambara. And so it's just, he had to be what he had to be. And he read the script and he said to me, apart from the prostitution, this story is really similar to mine, you know. So he wanted to make clear <laughs> that he never... But this is what happens. So most of the kids who arrived in Europe, then they, they disappear. There are thousands of kids who disappear, and they all end up, uh, you know, drug dealing and, you know, prostitution. And so I didn't have to make too many things up, you know. I need, I, I, I've done my research, and I wanted to tell a love story. That, that's it. That's, it's a story, you know. Uh, that it's about a relationship. I didn't want to make, make a film about immigrations, but my point of view about what happens is telling a, you know, I, I, I hope I gave it by telling a love story, you know, which is uh, unusual, but, um, you know, for two people on the run and two people who have like that mean guy after them, you know, but it does happen. It's, I'm, you know, I'm sure. Sorry for hogging the mic, but I want to keep asking questions. Um, <laughs> We have plenty of time, don't worry. Uh, so you mentioned how little dialogue there is in the film, which for me was really refreshing and I felt was like a deliberate choice. I wasn't even thinking about you know, the, the actors in that sense because it's such a visually expressive film. So maybe you could talk about the importance of the visual storytelling and the approach to the style. Um, yeah, it's, it was a challenge uh, to tell a story with, you know, with uh, images. And because I, the aim was to, you know, dig 
dig deep down in the Felix, in the Sardinian landscape. Sardinia is a beautiful island, but doesn't do anything to please you. You have to conquer Sardinia. It's like a beautiful woman who's there, and you have to do everything to go close to her because she's not going to come close to you. But if you get close enough and get her to love you, it's the most amazing place ever. And also, you know, around every corner you have like a, you know, a salt quarry and then you have zebras and then you have mountains and then you have the sea and then you have the pink flamingos. And then it's, it's an amazing place. And I wanted the place along with the kids to tell the story then if I managed uh, or not I don't know but that was the aim you know because and also these kids were so intense and every time I had to try to get them to say something it was it was much better to follow them and you know I would go with them and say okay now freestyle and they would be you know f uh, they knew the story and they were free to experiment with their own body. I mean, if Probably you work, more relaxed when yeah, if you work with non-actors, maybe that's, you know, the best thing. Then I know it's hard to follow a film that it's, you know, but for me, the photography was very important. Ferran Paredes is the um, uh, Spanish director of photography who made my first film and this one. And um, he has an eye for things before they happen. And he's also the camera work is his. And I think it makes a difference because you know, is so much into the the, you know, the 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 visual aspect that he also has to follow every movement of the actors with the, being a camera operator. But um, we worked a lot on that to create um, an aesthetic that um, what I call is not naturalistic. I'm not a neorealistic. I'm not. You know, I'm, I have probably you said you know ants and spiders and you know, but I just put me into the woods and nature, and I I like that. So. We explored that, and and it was very important for us to create a little sort of painting would be too much, but you know uh, the frame has to tell the story before the words. So that was that, the aim, you know. I think that football sequence is one of the most beautiful scenes I've seen in a film this year, really. The, the, the bath where he plays football. Oh, the, the football. football. Oh. That was an homage to Antonioni, you know, in Blow Up. They uh -huh. play tennis without the <laughs> right. ball. Very different but context and meaning, but, but yes. no, but that was totally um, improvised. Totally. We saw this field and because Khalil had, he has two dreams. He wants to be an actor and a football player. 90, 99% of the kids I've interviewed, they want to be a football player. Apart from one who said to me, I want to be a truck driver. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> but they all want to be football players. So every time there was a, you know, a football, there was, a, he would go mad. So <laughs> the director of photography found this field and he said, we have to do something here. And I said, oh, Khalil will love it, you know? So we, I put him there and I said, there you go, that's your football, you know, pitch. You do what you want, you know, that's your game. And, but then you realize you're, you know, it's a game that lasts the few seconds of, you know, the, the of your dream and in. then the reality is different. So I'm glad you like it, I like it too. <laughs> All right, questions in the audience, please raise your hand. Yes. I appreciate that. But in a world full of green screens and you know, special effects that fill the entire screen, it was just beautiful to see our conversation focus on people's souls. And I think that's the mark of an amazing director is that you can see it through their eyes and into their hearts, through their souls. That blew my mind because I've been completely blindfolded by big screens from Hollywood. So that was and now I'm going to cry. <laughs> I don't think I can repeat that because it was so eloquent. I wouldn't do it justice. <laughs> because if we managed to do that, that's... It, it, it was hard work, but like to give emotions and to you tell with little. Because this, and our producer is here, and he's, you know, maybe you guys want to ask him something. But it's um, when you have so little you have to go exactly for, as you say, the soul. And that was the aim, but I didn't know if I managed or not. At least for you, I did. E sono molto felice, I'm very happy.
Wow. So I don't know if everyone heard that, but... Ma grazie. He said that the truest measure of a film is how long it stays in your consciousness and that he will never forget this movie. God, so for one person who doesn't forget it, you know, I just... It's the, my, the award everybody would like to get. Then, you know, maybe other people can throw tomatoes at me, but at least... <laughs> He stays with him, you know, and that's uh, that's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Does anyone want the to follow that one up? dollars later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yes, please. Question is about the. It is. Question is about the uh, scene where the gardener says to split the flowers. Was that in improvisation or written? The twin flower obviously is these two kids, and that, that uh, the way they did it was improvised. Um, it happened in a scene before, you know, but because even with the florist, who was actually a, as an established actor in, in Italy, but he went along and he played with the kids because he knew he couldn't wait for them, expect them to say their lines, and so he had to help them. And as a matter of fact, he helped all of us because the guy is, you know, I love this guy. It's, I would I like to have him in every film, but he's made, I don't know, 40, 50 films. So it was a good guidance, especially if you work with people who's, who've never acted before. Uh, it was So the way he did it, it was, yes, improvised. He knew the concept was they shouldn't be split, these two kids. And while she's working, he's dreaming and playing the football, the imaginary football. So yes, it, it, it was the way he did it, but the concept was there. I think I saw another hand, yes. Question is about uh, aside from the love story, was the film intended to have a strong political message? There was a famous director before us. He said, "No, I'm not going to say that." But uh, no, it's not. The, my aim is not to send messages because I don't think I don't think I'm that important or intelligent or smart to have people follow my, you know, my political. Uh, point of view, but I'm presumption, presumes, presumptions enough to hope they're gonna follow my heart. There, this I wrote this film many years ago, and it, they always told me it was difficult to make until Giuseppe Gallo was crazy enough to make it many years ago. And for me, it was this kid gets to a shore, to a country, he wants to be rescued and he ends up rescuing. The, for me, the most important thing in the film is when he says to her, I'll protect you. He, he arrived in Italy to be protected. So there isn't a political message. If you want to ask me what I think about the immigration we have in Italy, this is what I think. This is what I think. We're changing color because Italy was, you know, was one of the you know, European countries who was all Italian up to 30 years ago. Now I go pick up my, 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 my daughter from school and I'm happy that I've got these kids that are African, Middle Eastern and Chinese and they shout and scream and swear with a very thick Roman accent. <laughs> that what makes me happy because they are Italians and the second generation. So we shouldn't forget our roots and culture because it, I think roots and culture are very important in every nationality, in every nation, but we should get what comes from the world, you know. And as a very thin and long country, Italy, it goes from Arabs to the Normans. To, so we are, you know, the representation of uh, you know, the result of a strong and beautiful immigration. So now it's a new wave. And uh, this is what I think. Our ca I, I've said this before. I believe in Italians as individuals, they're good. They open their arms, they go, they get all these people off the boats. As a country all together at the moment, we're going, you know, a bit all over the place. But I really trust people, like one by one, and I know we're gonna make some somehow some sort of difference now. And then political waves go and come and go, and you know, and it's like right wings is raising all over, you know, the world. But it's just the way we're going to have to work as individuals and not rely always on the party on this and that. If you ask me what I think about, you know, 
uh, all the issues that we're going through at the moment in Italy, this is what I think. You know, but then I don't want to be political. I want to be sentimental. And because I think maybe it's the best way to get over all these men talking in parliaments and, you know. And your film articulates that kind of starting point. Hopefully. Like, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> one relationship by one relationship. One encounter by one encounter. Yeah. More questions? Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> a friend of mine makes him, he'll be very happy. No, but when I say political, you know, it's like you can be political in a way that it's not political. You know, you have your feelings and your thoughts and you do believe in something. Not, that, which doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't regard like being left or right to center up. You know, and you're political with your feelings and with your with with your sentiment, your sent and that's what I wanted people to get. And if he came across, um, I'm really happy. If he didn't, I'll do better next time. <laughs> and thank you for the dress. <laughs> On the side. Yeah, of course. So since the shooting, have you followed up on what's happened to Khalil? Yeah, Khalil is going to have a big interview with the police in October. The reason why he's not here, because he doesn't have a document, doesn't have an ID, doesn't have paperwork. So because of this new wave of uh, sort of a political uh, situation that we have, uh, he's quite scared and they're going to get s stricter, but the um, Sardinia region and the Film Commission are helping him. If we prove that he's an actor, he's going he's gonna to have his paperwork and hopefully his passport and he can come to London where we're showing the film next and, and to Rome. Um, and so yes, yeah, definitely, because now we used, um, when we shot the film it was in um uh, in, in a sort of institution, I don't, a place where they, you know, would help them. Now, because he turned 18, is in a house with other uh, kids, like kids, I mean, uh, teens like him. And he works and he studies. Italian is, has improved 100%. Uh, uh, and yes, you know, he, he writes to me, to the producer, to the other actors, and we've been in touch with him. So, we, you know, we're going to help him with this... Uh, police interview he has to get his paperwork because they just need to see the film and he has a job. He has to prove he has a job and this I think is, his job is very good at that I believe. Yeah. We're just about out of time. If there's one more question we can fit it in. Yes. <laughs> I should record all these you know things and send them to my friend Michele who makes these dresses. Question is a question is about uh, what sentiment uh, would you like audience members to leave but the if, theater with? Yeah, if you encounter somebody and provokes a strong feeling, doesn't matter where they come from or if they speak your language or you know or if they're illegal illegally came into your country, it happens and it happens. You know, if it's a feeling, if it's a strong feeling between two human beings the difficulties uh, don't make it impossible. Well, thank you so much for coming. Don't forget to vote for the Girls People's Choice Award. Thank you so much, Laura. We're gonna see each other.